my favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Again, what we like is that he's, uh, he's, he's been a great teammate through it all, um, and he's done a lot of things defensively, um, verbally on the bench, um, penalty kill, just in, in all areas of the game. And Yes, it's one thing that, to be on a heater or whatever, you're individually scoring goals, but you still have to do a lot of things to, uh, to allow your team to have success, and he's doing a lot of those as well. Welcome in Judd's Hockey Show. That, that, of course, was Wild Coach Dean Everson talking about none other than Declan Goff. Uh, Declan Goff, and also joined by Ryan Brandle, Barstool Chief, the co-host of Redline Radio for Barstool Chicago. And and Chief, welcome in. And I want you to start off by saying you're on because you guys came up with what I think is a great idea and, most importantly, a great-looking shirt of Ryan Hartman Let's say this, to put this as nicely as possible, saluting Evander Kane to say you are number one. T- tell us about the shirt, about how it came up, how people can get it, and and as importantly, where the proceeds are going to go. Yeah, so, you know, Chicago still has a tie to Ryan Hartman. You know, he's from here, local kid. I know him a little bit, played here. Love Hartsley, right? So great moment. Uh perfect guy to get that gesture and it obviously was a viral moment and then we saw what he did with the donations and we're like you know we can get involved with that too you know Barcelona has a big platform uh we have spit and chicklets in-house is the biggest hockey podcast there is so took a cartoon image of that texted it to to Hartman to make sure he was cool with it he liked the idea then you know I said obviously we're going to donate whatever you know net proceeds we have to uh um children's Minnesota and that's the response has been incredible. So shout out to the the people of the great state of Minnesota. I think we're they're going to get a nice check. I think we're we're five figures now. So I don't know what it'll end up being, but it'll be a, a nice donation for them. Awesome. And and if if uh, p- people want to to still get get one, how can they do so? How can they go about getting a shirt? Yeah, I, I've been tweeting it out. So it's a uh, you know, Barstool Chief on Twitter and Instagram, but it's in our it's the Barstool Sports Store. So store.barstoolsports.com. It should be on the first page there. Uh, but yeah, still for sale. We're going to keep it going. I don't know. I don't know how long it, it, it's going to be relevant. But we're going to keep it going for a while here and see how much we can raise. And it's like I said, I think we've, we, I think we were right at about a thousand shirts, um, Beautiful. you know, first 24 hours. So that's very good response and gotta love, gotta love those Minnesota nice people. Yeah. Uh, by the way, listeners, it's right in the YouTube comments too. So if you if you want to just click the link right there, you can get the shirt uh, shirt as well. Uh, Ch- uh, Chief, you said you obviously you, you knew Ryan Hartman. Yeah, you spent some years in Chicago. He's obviously a Chicago boy. Um, is there anything off the mic or, or anything you yeah, have had a fun interaction with Ryan Hartman? I'm curious if if there's anything that's safe for podcasting or safe for for, for video you can tell about Hartsey. I, I think the the stuff that's off camera is not as inflammatory as the stuff he's done on the ice where he told the guy, you know, he was told the guy in Colorado, he was going to kill him in the penalty box a couple of years ago in the playoffs. And then, uh, and then, you know, the, the finger to Evander. So he's a really nice, like kind of quiet, mild mannered guy. Then he flips a switch and turns into a crazy person on the ice. And I love that about him. I love it. So uh, I'll be pulling for Hartman in the, in the playoffs and, you know, I'm a Blackhawks fan. So I'd love you guys make the conference finals, turn that second round pick into a first for flurry. So. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You get, guess what? So would Garen and yeah. fans here, man, like, like that is the ultimate win-win you, you get the first round pick. Yep. And, and cause, and that, that deal, that shocked me because the, the parameters of that trade to me were fantastic. Um, A first round pick, but I believe it that's attached to if if flower wins four games in the first two rounds Correct. and they, they advance bill garen chief will walk that draft pick to your house and <laughs> drop it off on your doorstep if that if, if the wild makes the run that is attached to the blackhawks actually securing that pick yeah so i, I mean i am a loser on the outside of the playoffs for like i don't know it feels like the seventh year in a row now for the blackhawks but i'll be my my brother has a job with the florida panthers so i'm rooting for them in the east nice. and then you know I, I i obviously like hartman a lot and uh would like that first round pick so i'm rooting for the wild in the west and that's that's going to be my uh rooting interest as we go through here this spring 
Are you are you surprised, too, Chief, that like Hartman was obviously a first round pick in Chicago? Um, you know, kind of turned his game into a grinder and, and a nice little checking player. But now, like he's exploded as this number one center in Minnesota. Like you know, and playing with Kirill and, and, and Zuccarello certainly certainly helps. But are you surprised to see this dude go from hey maybe he was a flaming eyes a first round pick and turning into a role player to now being the player that people probably project him to be when he was coming into the NHL? No. I mean, no, he, I, like, I'm not surprised. This is the player I always thought he was. His rookie year, he was awesome. He had 19 goals, and that was a, a team that, you know, had a really good regular season for the Blackhawks. And then the wheels kind of fell off the organization, like, right after that. But it, and, and he had a shoulder injury. I know he had a wrist injury. Like, he had some, some little nagging things that he didn't necessarily – that he was kind of playing through that was hindering his game. And once he kind of, you know, matured as a player but also was – actually healthy he's blossomed into what we've seen in minnesota the last couple of years and finding the right type of organization for him an organization that believed in him uh gave him a long-term deal i think that really helped his confidence too and and he's become kind of a leader in that room so i i'm not re- like to this level maybe a little bit but i always thought he was you know going to be a very good middle six type guy and a, a type of guy that every playoff team with with major aspirations needs because he can score he can hit. He's mean. He's tough. He'll block shots. He does everything. Great teammate. So and a great guy. So like like that's what you need. I'm not surprised at all uh, that he's that he's you know turned into what you guys have. So as a sports fan here, mm-hmm. we usually disappoint. Sometimes suck, but we disappoint. <laughs> like 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 the Wolves meltdown last night would be would be unfathomable in some towns like that would be like oh my god this you know something like this will not take place in our town for 20 more years here it's just like wednesday night oh we melted i mean it's just embarrassing so here's my question as a hockey fan Mm -hmm. the blackhawks now to to your point have been down for quite some some time it's it turned into a a off the the ice gong show too which is extremely unfortunate because it's a great franchise but my question to you is this you have rings now like mm-hmm. they won cups they were they went on a stretch of great hockey is it worth the trade off Be- because i've always said i would take the championship or or in your case championships if it meant that you were going to be bad like we're always afraid of being bad so we're trying to you know be okay we're okay but you never win titles being o- okay now in retrospect going through what you've seen from your team for an extended period of time is it worth it because you did have the championship parades with with that great silver chalice mm-hmm. being uh you know Tays able to hold that sucker up yeah it's it's a little bit of a complicated question just because look at there everything every organization other than maybe the patriots goes through like these peaks and valleys and and the blackhawks certainly had an incredible peak but the part that really stings is that it felt like it, they haven't won a playoff series since that Stanley Cup in 2015. They're, they signed Taves and Kane to eight-year deals. They will not have won a playoff series for the entirety of those deals. So I am still, I am still angry at Stan Bowman. I cannot let it go that you know if if they cratered at a more appropriate time, like now, if it was ending now. But there's no reason why they should have been this bad for this long with that core. But it was self-inflicted wounds. It was, you know, the organization got bloated, too fat, complacent. Everybody wanted credit. Uh, they had a lot of issues. And then obviously all the off the ice stuff, like, it's just like, oh, my God, like you're not laughing stock doesn't even begin to say it. So it's like this is an embarrassment. And um, so, yeah, like we're, you can't, you know, what do they say? Flags fly forever or whatever that expression right. is. Yeah. And, and it, those those are some of the happiest moments. You know, I was at, got to go to a lot of those games with my dad and, you know, I, I, I am very friendly, you know, good friend of mine, Scott Darling, was on the team in 15. So I got to do like all the cup parade and, you know, spray the champagne out of bars and like be with the guys on party bus, all that. It was awesome. Can't take that away. It's burned in my mind forever. I'm still angry at Stan Bowman. <laughs> uh, summer of 15, summer of 17, a myriad, including the, uh, the pick they got back from Hartman originally. Uh, it, you know, when they traded him to Nashville, it wasted that one. They, they've been on the wrong end of, I don't know, a dozen trades in the last five, six, seven years. And it hurts that it ended prematurely because you know it's going to end. And we were we were the bottom of the barrel franchise before this um, 
that that run. Yep. And it's like we're right back there. And it's like, wait a second, we were like it was like a mirage, and now we're right back to being a joke. And uh, and I, I really, it, it's worth it, but it still stings that it ended prematurely. Last one for me, Chief. Uh, you know, I made the mistake, Judd and I did, when we were doing preseason projections back in September. Like, hey, who, who's going to make the playoffs and whatnot? I don't know why. I was sipping the Blackhawks Kool-Aid. I was oh, like, you know what? I think they're going to sneak in as one of these last wild card teams. Hockey is already kind of a weird sport. Teams can pop back up. And then, obviously, the wheels came off the bus. But, like, Debrink gets a stud for you guys. Like, obviously, like, he, he's a stud. I don't know stud. That they ever put the wheels on the bus. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I took I took the apple and ran with it, right? But, like, I was looking at it. And, like, all right, Debrink, it's obviously a stud. And he had another great season this year. You know, I know Kirby Dock still hasn't figured it out. But, like, a third overall pick. Even though Seth Jones like came crashing down to earth, and that might be an, just an albatross for for a little while, I thought Chicago was going to pop back up this year. How how far away do you think they are though of of returning to the playoffs and getting back to the contention of being one of the better teams in the West? Yeah, so I I was with you, and people like to you know twist my words on Twitter, but I'm like, yeah, I think you know people are like, I thought you said the Blackhawks would be good. I'm like, no, I thought they would be average. I thought they would be at like perfectly like the 15th or 16th best team in the league. Like right smack in that meaty part of the curve. Uh, I don't think the wheels have fallen off Seth Jones. I, 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 that he's still a very good player. He's a number one D. He's not headman, but he's probably a top fifteen defenseman in the NHL. I think some of those there's these analytic charts that don't mm-hmm. play favorably. He does one thing that he doesn't doesn't play well at his own blue line in transition. That's it. Like that's really the only like deficiency in his game. But he's a very good player. But, yeah, like you would assume some development from Doc. I thought they would be a wild card or, or right there too. But there was always that boogeyman of uh, Jeremy Colleton, who was completely incompetent as a coach. And it was like, well, if everything goes right, meaning you get development out of Doc, Reichel turns into something, Jones, I really like the, the Jake McCabe signing in the offseason too. And it's like this could, you know, like this could be a team that could find their way back into the playoffs. And you get Taves back and the whole thing. And it's like, well, and and I would say within seven days of the season starting, three, four games, you knew it was going to be. <laughs> and then all the scandal stuff came out and then they fired Jeremy. And it's, you know, it was it, it was over before it started. Blues wild first round. Who do you got? I, I really like the wild. I really do. I, I've been kind of banging that drum all year. I think they got everything you need. You got a good mix of, you know, veterans like Zuccarello, young guys with Kirill and, and Boldy. They got the goaltending. They got very, very good defense, mobile defense. They're tough. The Blues, are like, they're, it's almost going to be like looking in the mirror for those two teams a little bit. And I think it's going to be a great series. But ultimately, I think, you know, I do think it'll be flurry. I know Talbot's had a great year, but I don't know how you don't, hand the keys to that guy if, if Talbot gets a little shaky because you just know what Fleury's ceiling is. And I think that'll be the difference. I think Fleury get, puts him over the top. Ryan O'Reilly scares me. That's the one he, thing that scares He's, he's so damn good. It. And there's he's no answer. Guy. Yeah. Right? Like, there's no answer. There's no there's no guy where you're like, Minnesota's got this guy, and that guy is wired. I, I mean, I love guys like Taze in his prime who yep. are playoff studs. And you know what? They love this. They love the fact that the playoffs are months of being a pain in their ass and they cut through all the BS. And I can't wait. Oh, God, it's great. It's, it's going to be great. Oh, well, yeah. Like Ryan O'Reilly doesn't get lumped into that uh, Bergeron, Taves category because he only has, you know, he, he's bounced around a lot. He had some, some low moments in his career. He's an awesome player. He, you're right. Like he's built for the playoffs. It reminds me a little bit of like Ryan Kessler back with the Canucks and the, yes. and the a little bit like that. Yes, like that yes. kind of player, like he's he's love big, that. he's mean, he's he's just he's awesome. Yeah, I would love to have a guy like that. I hate him. I hate the Blues more well, than. But anything. that's what makes it. Yeah, no, but that's what makes it great. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love hating people. So I grew up a North Stars <laughs> fan, and I freaking hated your Blackhawks. Al Secord, Larmer, yeah. Savard. I hated the Murray freaking Bannerman when I was a kid. Broke my heart. <laughs> North Stars were coming off a Stanley Cup Finals run, and yep. your Blackhawks beat them in the first round because <laughs> Bannerman stood on his bleeping head. Yep. Man, did I hate your team. Yeah, I always hear those stories from my dad because it was like, yeah, it was like the, a war between Minnesota and, oh. and the Blackhawks, and then it was like whoever won that was just going to get dusted by the Oilers, and that was kind of <laughs> it was true. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yep. Our stool chief, great stuff. 
appreciate it. G- great cause. Thanks for j- joining us. And uh, we'll t- talk to you again at some point soon. Yeah, that was fun, man. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. you. guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate of course, that. Dude. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. All right, take care. We'll see, see you guys. guys. Bye-bye. Barstool Chief, and again, uh, I got to get a shirt too, Dex. But, but, oh, yeah, we got to get one. I, I think we both get both have to get those shirts because they are great where ryan hartman saluting evander Kane. all all right uh let's talk briefly about what uh is transpiring now wild wins again last night full disclosure i was at the wolves game and so i've Mm -hmm. seen highlights i did see did you see the one that was circular the circulating around twitter of boldy making the pass to fiala and goudreau are these guys the freaking harlem globetrotters now i'm telling you this is this is why I'm not. Con- this is why I'm not concerned about these two dudes not showing up in the playoffs. Those these two dudes, as in Fiala, Boldy, Goudreau, that line. Um, they're on fire right now. And look, there's still yeah. what a, a, a week, ten days or so before the playoffs here start. So there, that, that's still a long time. And I'm sure even as now, now that Blues Wild are cemented, but we're still fighting for home ice. There could be a situation too where where star players get rested at on game 82. We'll see what happens as as the chips fall a little bit. But sure. I, I I truly think that that line's still going to be able to score. Because if the, if the opposing team's task is to shut down Kirill and Mats and, and Hartman, okay, that's a fine plan. Fial and Boldy are still going to be able to beat you. On Goudreau, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. Because it feels like it feels like Hartman plays his role on the Zuccarello Caprisov line really, really well. But I mean, it's his role. Like he's not a sexy player and he's never going right. to be. And that's fine. Um, and, and, you know, Matt and Kirill go back and forth and back and forth and Hartman contributes and certainly collects some goals. So this is no criticism of Ryan Hartman, but here's my question. It feels like, and I didn't see this coming. So the, to be very clear, I'm not patting myself on the back one, but it feels like Freddie Goudreau more and more has real legit talent at times. Like he is, I don't feel like he's playing as much of a, just a role as Hartman is. I feel like he's contributing at times and making plays. And I mean, this was a guy who I summarily, I think when the year started dismissed as a, as a Dean Bobo. Both Um, of us did. Yeah. But, but am I right? But am I right in saying, I'm not trying to say he's a star. Okay. So hear me clearly, but am I right in saying that it feels like his skills at least right now are far superior to what we expected? Yeah, I, I, definitely, definitely. Look, he's not a flashy player. He just isn't. Like he's he's a fine, and, and I think I think hockey purists might agree here, and and a lot of scouts. And I would honestly would love Garen's opinion on this too. He can skate. The dude can skate. Yeah, so at true. the end of the day, can, can 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 he keep up? Like, does he have the skill? Does he have the hands? Does he have the finishing ability? Not really. Like he, he he's, it's not. An albatross, but he doesn't have that next level, that Fiala, that Boldy, that Kirill, that Mats, that even a Hartman has now kind of developed, right? Like they he doesn't have that skill. Can he skate? Can he keep up? Can can he not make a mistake? And that's basically what he, he's in the middle there. And, and it's not to diminish what he's been able to do this season, because yes, you can make another case that he might be the best value in the NHL. I mean, he's just making one point two million on a one year deal. i I would assume he's gonna get brought back for probably another team friendly deal. But he doesn't do anything, even like analytically. Like there's nothing he does that's eye opening. He's just a completely solid, average player across the board, and he can skate. And those skating things can be the, picked up. I think that's what beyond the, I, analytics. I think you nailed it. I, I think the fact that he can skate and has skills in that area make a difference. Uh, what did you make of Cam Talbot? becoming the first goalie on this team in a long yeah. time, basically since the flurry trade uh, to start back to back games. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, I, he's earned it, right? I, like he's definitely earned the right. Um, I don't know. Maybe in my reckless speculation tells me too. when I, when I saw that news yesterday, like, are they just trying to keep flurry a little fresh, right? Like they don't want to risk running something out there. And I do find it weird though. Judd flower has to my knowledge here has not started against the blues yet. Like they've played the Blues, I think, three, twice, three, three times. He, they've played them three times since Flurry's Winter been class. acquired, right? No, no, oh, yeah, twice no, yeah, since yeah. then. But yeah, but Camp both Alba starts every game. Yes, my are are they doing that to not now? Granted, Mark Andre Flurry's thirty seven years old. I everyone in the bleeping with the Blackhawks, I bet. So like, yep, it's, everyone it's, everyone it's, knows who he is. But my my my, yeah. my my grand point is, I wonder if they're just saving that card, like that. I wonder if they're just saving that card to to Maybe. not to not show their hands there. Yeah, I couldn't, 
I I know the Cam got the shutout against Montreal a couple nights back, and so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But it seemed odd to me that he got the start back to back. And I'm trying, like, I'm trying to deduct: does that mean something, or does it mean nothing? And he just got the start back to back because he did play well in in a game. Again, in the second period of that game in Montreal, they they were absolutely terrible. So I am not sure. Uh, l- last thing, and I don't want to discuss it yet, but put it in the notes. We need to do an entire show at some point soon on this. What is Kevin Fiala's worth now? Because I think this whole thing about, well, yeah, just get rid of Dumbo, which, by the way, I said again, I'm incriminating myself. Uh, I think that's out the window. I mean, this guy, this is incredible. Like he is, and it, and if this translates Dex to the playoffs, watch out. Like he's like, this is no longer, well, he'll, he might just take, I mean, this is what he's doing now is bordering on superstar. Cause he's yeah, no, star, it in is. my opinion, but it's bordering yep. now. Like he's taking, he is, he's still not Kirill by any means, but it feels like he's getting a hell of a lot closer than I gave him credit for being uh, two or three weeks ago. When he is on, he's he's damn good, dude. And and you're seeing he's been on for basically the last six weeks. But he, th- this is the problem that the the Wild put themselves in. Uh, they, they they literally said we're not going to negotiate a long term contract, or they weren't re- willing to play ball. And now yeah. he could potentially max out. Like and, and if I'm Fiala, good for him, and he, he should. should, and, and he, he should. should. So, but like we're past the point of well, they got to do whatever they can, folks. It might not be possible. It, it, like that, that that's a good point like like saying we'll just get rid of dumba and kulikov and you'll have the money i don't know about that uh, yeah i don't know either okay we're done uh th- thanks to barstool chief great stuff buy a shirt support the cause and you know what who doesn't want a shirt with a guy flipping a guy off right and oh, I I, i'm sorry it. dex where where can people find find that it, right below it's, it's in the description the in, the, in, the, in the in the youtube you're comment great. section and if you're an audio person awesome. on the podcast let's go to our youtube channel it's in there you'll see it Awesome stuff. And the Wild won again. So uh, why don't we hear from Billy Garrett? Listen, you guys know what this is all about, right? Right? What's it all about? Spurgy? Hard work and having fun. F- that. This is about f- winning.